a bit of quality. Whew, at last. He's been on here before, and he was a regular on my sorely missed Satanta show. I still cry about it every night. He is the Commonwealth middleweight champion, a Commonwealth Games gold medal winner. He's unbeaten in 20 as a pro, and people are now avoiding him. And they are avoiding him as well. He's in the world top 10, and he's in my studio right now. Darren Barker is his name. Welcome, Darren. Oh, hi, Steve. You're right, mate. Darren, just get it right. You didn't go to Cyprus and box a Repton the other week, did you? You didn't go no on like comment. a missing. No, no comment. comment. I knew it. I knew it. <laughs> First of all, Darren, welcome to the show. Just, uh, Cheers, mate. Before we move on, Robert McCracken, I know you work with Robert, yep. in, obviously Tony Sims and your trainer and work together. He's taken the job at uh, Great Brown. I'm over the moon with it. I think that's what... You know, um, English boxing needs someone who's been there, done it. Hmm. You know, he's, he's boxed at top class as an amateur and a professional, and I think he's going to do a fantastic job. I think the the lads, the boxers, are going to be over the moon. You know, hmm. you know, doing it for him. Have you been up and done any sparring up in Sheffield? Because I know that other members of Rob's team. You know, I know you're not with Rob as such. You're with yeah. Tony Sims, but uh, you know, you're still in that same area, that same little promotional group, Mick, Mick Hennessy's. Yeah, stable. Uh, have you been up and done any work up there? We haven't, but funny enough, we were talking about it today. That'd cool. be something we would, you know, can only help help, help me and help the can. lads. And can yeah, it'd be something we'd be interested in doing. When you, you get plenty of speed from guys that are used to doing that's three it. rounds, and this kid Kurt Garvey, I don't know if you know about him. He's the guy that's the ABA middle, lost yeah. in the ABA finals, right. but then won the British middleweights. He beat the guy that beat him in the final. Yeah, I like him. He's a big range. He's like he's built like you, big middleweight, yeah. but he's your size, big tall yeah. kid. Only a baby. I like him. He'd be good, ki good kid. I think for you to spar. Right. Last time I spoke to you on the telephone, uh, well, not the last time, you've just been at Chelsea last time, but the last time I spoke to you before then, uh, Mick Hennessy, promoter, just won the purse bids for a fight against Matt Macklin. Yeah. I hate to say it, but I came, off, I came off air and I said, listen, that's too good, it ain't going to happen. And I know you in your heart of hearts knew yeah. it wasn't going to happen. It didn't happen. He vacated the title. He wins the European title. You're boxing Wayne Elcott, the guy that he's beaten for the vacant title. That's at Brentwood out in Essex on the 28th of November. Were you disappointed with Macklin? I was disappointed. I mean, I suppose a little bit in my heart as well. I thought that might happen. He might yeah. say something else. You've got but to tell us who, haven't you? I mean, and I've got to take my hat off to him. You know, to be honest, he, he did go and do the business, so fair play. But I mean, yeah, I mean, I can't really look at that now. My job's to win the British title now. I've got a massive fight on my hands, and um, yeah. it's one I'm, I've trained very hard for, and one I know I'm going to win. And it's a dangerous fight, because it, it was, every fight's dangerous at this yeah, level. Down. But what I mean by that is that Elcock knows this, you know, let's not beat around the bush, this is his last chance. He loses this, and then he's back, you know, he's really got to struggle well, to get back, back up. He's back in the mixer then, isn't he? Yeah. And um, I think he wants to prove that, you know, he had a bad night against Macklin, and, you know, he, you know, it would be better to show it against than me. Than you, so yeah. I mean, yeah, he's going to be well up for it. But uh, so am I. You know, it's a yeah. dream come true for me. So you're looking good, Nick. Now, you are you close to? Yeah, what, I'm what pretty much. Now? I'm d about two pound over. Wow. You know, so I've, you know, I've been doing the weight properly now for the last few fights, and yeah, feeling really good, really strong, and I can't wait. Now it's it's what's happened a little bit this sort of summer, sort of you know, start before the summer, before before that fight against M M McDermott, but. What's happened is it's clearly you're showing on the world radar now. You, you're creeping into a couple of tens, and people, yeah. you know, box record got you at eleven or whatever. Yeah. But there's some big names above you, so you can't yeah. complain too much about that. Um, I mean, it, it, it's really. I think it's going to move on for you now, uh, mm. Darren. That's what I'm. You know, if I gaze into my crystal balls, I think it's going to move on a little bit fast for you now. I think you're going to. Have well, a, I think, so. I think I'm ready to be. Year. Yeah, I'm ready to be unleashed. I mean, I'm approaching my prime now, or or if not yeah. in my prime, and I'm ready to be let loose. You know, mm. I, I, I'm. You look at the middleweight world champions out there, and they're not, you know, they're not no Floyd Mayweathers no, no, by any stretch of the imagination. You'd them, wouldn't you? you'd I'd go, fight any single one of yeah. them, you know, and um, especially the two Germans out there, yeah. um, Sturm and yeah, well, that's Sylvester. Bit. So yeah. I mean, I, I'd go in there right now, yeah. you know, right now, and I mean, it, it does give me, you know, something to really push on for. But sure. I'm not looking at fire I've got uh, all these opportunities are gonna, only going to come my way if I win the British title yeah, of course or when are. I win the British and, title and, and also if you win it fairly decently I mean, uh, you know, of course yeah. you, you know, you're, you're, you're a big boy you, you know how it works uh, that's right I mean, you're right about the about you, 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 you know you're reaching your prime now but in all, also you're really young 20, you're 27 or yeah. you're really young 27 don't you? you know you've not been any wars yet you ain't in any bang ups no. yet mate yeah so, I, I mean, mean got, I was a slow mature as well so I, yeah, yeah I mean I could even be in my prime, you know, even in a couple of years, who yeah. knows, but I'm feeling, you know, strong and fit and uh, the experience is there now and I'm yeah. ready to take on these guys. Now, in an ideal world, you, you know, you win, you beat, uh, you beat uh, Elcott, you win the British title, you've got the two titles then, 
do you then waste time chasing uh, Macklin because I'm going to phrase it like that mm. or do you then look at maybe Mick doing working his magic which he works it takes a while he has to go to all those conventions and That's convince right. someone at the WBA or the IBF or the WBC to mm. fire what's your cause you don't want to go back to treading water again do you you don't want no, international garbage not. fights do but you? the one thing is there there is all them opportunities there. Yeah, the there's, there's lots of doors that can yeah. be opened but I mean it, I keep going back to it, but it's so important I win this British first, yeah. you know, because it is the future is exciting. When I look at all, you know, the the doors that could open, all the different um, titles out there I could be fighting for. So I mean, win this British, and then and then you know the world's my oyster. Yeah. I mean, I would still like to see a fight with you and Macklin. I'd like mm. to see a fight with you and Daddy, a fight with you and Andy Lee. I think you've got some they're, good... They're all fights I want as well. Absolutely. You know, you know, you've got to take a leaf out of Carl Frotch's book, as far as I'm concerned, That's Darren. Right. You get hold of a title, a world title, or European or British, and you've got to make proper defences. You have, yeah. yeah to, I mean, that's what I know, reckon. I don't... What's the point in boxing otherwise? You know, you want to do it for yourself. You want to prove to yourself that you're the best in the sport, and you want to gain respect by others, and yeah. by doing that, is fighting the best out there. So yeah. I want to be fighting these guys. Yeah, exactly. I, you know, I mean, there was, you know, we're not going to name champions from the, you know, the last 10 years or so but I think that uh, I think that Carl's really shaking things up the way he's doing business mm. you know with good fights every time uh, and, and I, I think that I think that's the future because as you say, if you can't if you can't beat those guys yeah. you know it's no good fighting washed up welterweights and stuff is it I mean, and I, you know what, I think that Darrell was a real tough hey. um, opponent someone to come over he was I'll tell you what he'll take some beating you know someone who, who comes to the country as well to try and nick the title yeah. off of him that's an hard night's work, and he, you know, well. and, you know, I think he'd done really well, Cole, considering. No, listen, I think he did really well, but not just that. Um, you know, Durrell will be a better fighter now as well. And on this mm. show, I've got to tell you, before that fight, we, I really praised Durrell. I said, all this talk about him folded and collapsing, I don't believe that. He's unbeaten, and the worst thing in the world is an unbeaten fighter, because you don't know how to lose. That's right. You, and you don't know when you are losing yeah. either, because you've never lost. And I agree with you. I think he'll take some beating now in his Super 6. I really do. Mm. I mean... The, the hand speed was absolutely phenomenal. I mean, it was ridiculous. Yeah, it's but good, good I mean, like I say, someone to come to the country and try and nick it. There's no way he won that fight. And I think Carl done really well. Now, when you fight in Brentwood, uh, in uh, out, sorry, out there, out there in Essex, is that easy for your mob to get there? Because it is a bit. It's of not a, bad. Yeah, a bit of a. Now, and also, we're we using Dazzle or Disco these days. It, no, Disco's so I'm never gone. Sure. No, that's gone. Disco's no. gone. <laughs> well, pretty much. I don't know. You'll probably hear a few chants of it. <laughs> On the 28th, but, <laughs> I mean... What about your mate that you came in to see me at Satanta with, the one who, who was like a rock musician? Oh, yeah, Jack. Yeah, yeah but he I sort mean. of works for GP... He's like my little beat. roadie, isn't he? He's my roadie. <laughs> he's, and everyone thought he was like a rock and roller. <laughs> yeah, he's far from it. <laughs> that, Joe, they weren't even real tattoos, they had the sleeves you put on. <laughs> yeah, the whole Van Halen yeah. look. Now, now, you, you do have a bit of a fan base, don't you? And I, and I, I, and I, I talked about you. I talked to to mention this to Mick Hennessy once. I said I think that Darren Barker's fans. I think that they got a chance of just going ballistic because they. Yeah. What, what I like about your fans, and I, and it's the truth, is they really get into it, don't they? They have a laugh, don't they? Yeah. It's a right carnival atmosphere. Well, what it is, it? it's like um, I belong to a football club as well. I'm down ah. there every week. E bugs. He's buying old grammarians, and it's got that real sort of. They bring the football style of. Yeah, laughter. Know, yeah, it is a laugh. Yeah. It's a bit banter. It's only a yeah, laugh. They give you and a stick and all that. I like yeah, all that. Do, yeah. They do give you and, some uh, stick. Uh, uh, yeah, and they love it and they do. It's a good atmosphere, you know. And uh, it, I, I buzz off it. I really do, you know. It's blinding. Did, did, are you sort of fighter that gets miserable in the, you know, sort of a bit hard to be around the last two weeks before a fight, Dan? I've got to ask Jim. Jim's out there. Yeah, yeah, she's putting a thing. Yeah. But in all fairness, Jen, I don't, I don't mind that. I like that. I don't yeah. like. You know, when when I hear fighters say, "No, I'm the same," well, yeah. I can't see how you can be. You're down on the weight. I'm not you like, like this. Uh, it's more excitement. I'm buzzing for the fight. I mean, this is what I do yeah. it for. To be headlining shows, fighting with the British title, defending the Commonwealth is massive, and it's something you know I've dreamed of when I was a kid. So I mean, I've got that bit of excitement, but you do get keyed up, and um, sometimes you you know you need your own space, and yeah. you know because you are it's an aggressive sport, isn't it? And uh, and do you think as you move on? I mean, you know that Carl, you know Carl fought up there two in the morning, nine thousand mm. people in there, a lot of expectation. You could really feel it that night. And I was doing the five live. And it was a real, and I've been at ringside a lot, you know, and it was a real, whew, this is happening tonight. You could really sense yeah. it. Do you crave that as well? Do you think yeah, you're going to like that? Down? That was like, I really experienced that. Uh, other than the Commonwealth Games final was uh, yeah. against McDermott, my last fight yeah, at yeah, that was, that was, yeah, that was a the bear only, pit, isn't it? That, it was the only time I've ever boxed and I couldn't hear my ring entrance. It, it, oh, was, wow. it was unbelievable. It was the smallest sort of uh, yeah, yeah, venue. Yeah. It, yeah. it was bang on and I, my lot were just unbelievable and I couldn't hear a thing. And it was, I had goosebumps, honestly, walking to the ring. That's and good, it was, though. But is that, that's, that's what I do it for. It's like, that was, But did know. you feel calm once you got in there? 
Yeah. So I then mean, translating to you losing I your mean, mind. You see me box, you know, I'm yeah, about, and you're I'm, calm sort of, uh, I'm calm and sort of, I don't get, I'm not anxious or anything like sure. that. I buzz off the occasion and, uh, you know, and quite just nice enjoy at times to enjoy yourself and sort of show off and show mm -hmm. what you're capable of. You know, all the hard work's done in the gym. Of course it is, yeah. Well, I must admit, I'm disappointed that Disco's gone. I don't mind Dazzler. No, you oh, can it'll, it'll, Disco if you want. If, 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 if I could do that, it will make, it will, I tell you what, it will make me happy. I wish I could sing that. All right, I like gonna, that gonna keep getting me on your shows and that. You can keep you can Disco okay. all the one. You've heard him here. Disco, Disco stroke Darren. Stroke Dazzler. Darren Barker. He's fighting uh, for the uh, vacant British middleweight title. It's also a Commonwealth defence, yeah? I'm yep. assuming, yeah. Against Wayne Elcock from Birmingham, Brentwood Centre, Essex, the 28th of November, 09. You'll be able to, you look, just Google Darren Barker and then Google Hennessy. You'll get the information on it. The tickets will probably start about 35 the 30 pound, yeah. 30 pound, they start going up to, I don't know, 80 80 pound ringside, yeah, and uh, it's gonna, there's a great undercard, and it's going to be a fantastic yeah. show. It's a great venue. Uh, it's, it's, so. a, it's a cracking old venue there, and there's some, been some good old bust ups there, some good old fights there and more than that it's a good atmosphere a knowledgeable crowd down there like you get yeah, to, you get, actually get some boxing. locals in there yeah they yeah. know the boxing and this yeah it's going to be one not to miss right. Darren Barker thank you very much indeed